In this video, I'm going to do another update on my W212 E63. We'll start with the one thing that was holding back this car from really being perfect, the headlights. The lenses had this cloudy haze in a V shape. This seems to show up on basically every W212 that I've seen and even some Porsches from this era. My initial thoughts were that the lenses were damaged or burned and will need replacement, which would be a lot of work, but it turns out that it's fixable at little to no cost. What you need is two magnets wrapped in a microfiber cloth, a flexible grabber tool or magnet, and finally isopropyl alcohol, or ideally the OE fluid, and the part number is on screen. You open up the headlight housing at the back and take out the cornering lamp bulb, and then you just have enough room to stick your tool through, and then you get the two magnets together and wipe the problem area, and after a few passes it clears up. Just work slowly and carefully to keep the magnets together. A relatively easy fix and a must do if you have some haze on the inside of your lens. I love the look of these headlights all fresh. In the last update on this car, when I looked at running costs, I mentioned I was starting work on the PCV valve as the oil dipstick was popping out. It also happened to be the original PCV as you can see the date stamped. Replacement involved removal of the intake manifold. Quite straightforward to remove. Best to disconnect this line here from the charcoal canister as it goes all the way to the back of the intake manifold. The PCV bolt was very hard to remove. Instead of forcing it and breaking it, I let it sit for a while with WD-40 and then worked it back and forth slowly and eventually it worked its way out. Then I unplugged everything from the intake, unbolted it, lifted it out. These intake manifolds are known to usually be full of oil when you remove it and tip it over. Mine was actually surprisingly dry inside, which is good to see. While the intake was out, I just went ahead and replaced the injectors as it's good to preventatively replace them. Reportedly, as they get old, they can stick open and damage the engine. Good thing I changed them with the manifold out of the car because they had a lot of sand and dirt built up around them, and you don't want that to fall in your engine. I replaced the PCV with a new one. Everything was cleaned carefully, and the intake manifold gaskets and bolts were replaced. Everything was reconnected, and the car runs better than ever. It may just be mental games, but the engine seems more responsive and smooth after changing injectors and PCV. Now that the car is top notch, it really is a pleasure to drive. I also did the sunroof service because it probably wasn't done in a long time, and the roof was slow to open. I cleaned and greased the rails at the front, and then oiled the rear track with the GPL 105. Totally smooth now. Now I should also mention a few thoughts on the wagon version of the E63. Overall, a great counterpart to the sedan, and of course very spacious and practical. There was no E63 wagon in North America for 2010 and 2011, and it came along for 2012 onwards. These are more expensive on the market because they are rare, especially in the USA. The wagon is about 100 kilograms heavier than the sedan, and that's the only downside really, in my opinion. I saw a few questions about the different wheel options for these cars. I think the 19 inch twin five spoke wheels are one of my favorite Mercedes wheels ever. It just suits the car so well. I really don't like the standard 18 inch wheels that you could have got on this car. It just doesn't suit the car well in my opinion. And I think the 10 spoke 
19 inch wheels are pretty decent, but the 18 inch ones are just too small. These E63s have 255 section tires on the front and 285 in the back. The front track is actually the same width as the C63 Black Series, as are the tire widths. That was always a bit of a problem on the regular C63, the tires were just so narrow. Lots of people also ask my opinion about this pre-facelift versus the facelift W212. Just based on styling, I like the pre-facelift better because it's more distinctive, more Mercedes. For example, I just prefer the classic radiator grille compared to the larger star. They also flatten the rear fender on the facelift, which makes the side profile look more generic. So I just think the pre-facelift still gets the nod from me. As I've mentioned before, I think the interior looks great in black in this car, but I think Mercedes made a few mistakes with the interior colors. The tan and beige don't look good in my opinion. They should have not done the dashboard, the doors, and the carpet in grey or beige. They should have done it like the Designio cars with only the seats and door inserts in the lighter color, with everything else black. I also got my hands on the original Sport Auto test of this car back when it was new and it's interesting to see what they were saying. In a group test versus the Porsche Panamera Turbo, surprisingly they gave the win to the E63 over the Porsche. They talked about better steering as well as a better balance of ride and handling. For a big sedan, as I've said before, this car handles pretty well. One last thing I'll mention is that in the last video on the E36 I talked about the history of the AMG badge and how it changed in the early 1990s and a few people were asking about the change in late 2009. He was actually first seen on the W212 E63. The new letter A slanted to the right which quote closes the visual gap and makes the logo more emblematic. The subtle rebranding symbolized AMG doing more extensive changes to Mercedes cars and the introduction of their own car, the SLS. Anyways, that's it for this update. Thanks for watching. If you want to support the channel, take a look at my store. Link is in the description. If you want to see more Mercedes and AMG content, subscribe for more videos like this one.